Now let's talk about the surface marking of your pleura. So what is surface marking? Firstly, surface marking means somehow you have to tell the location of the organ exactly where it is located by using landmarks that are present on the surface of your body, which you can see. So let's go ahead and firstly talk about the visceral pleura. The visceral pleura will have the similar surface marking as your lungs. So let's start with visceral pleura's anterior margin first. Let's suppose these are the clavicles, this is your rib cage, this is your manubrium body of sternum and xephoid process. The first point lies at the sternoclavicular joint. The second point lies at the sternal angle. What is the sternal angle? Where the manubrium is joining with the sternal body. There is an angle over there called the sternal angle. So in the median plane of that angle is your point number two for visceral pleura. After that, now we're going to differentiate the right and left lungs. In the right lung, the next point is the xiphi sternal angle where the xiphoid process is joining the sternum. So this is the anterior margin of your visceral pleura of the right lung. While in the left lung, the points remain similar in the beginning, sternoclavicular joint, then point median plane of the sternal angle. However, since the left lung has a cardiac notch, as you can see, it has a cardiac notch. This is the notch that is made for the heart to settle. Obviously, the heart is going to be between the two lungs. So the anterior margin of your left lung has a cardiac notch that we'll talk about later. This cardiac notch causes the anterior margin of the visceral pleura to be a little different from the right side. So the first point is your sternoclavicular joint and then the sternal angle. However, at the mark of fourth costal cartilage, that's your next point. And then you go laterally 3.5 centimeter from the sternum at the fourth costal cartilage, that's your next point. And then you move downwards and medially and up to the sixth costal cartilage, that's your next point. This forms your anterior margin of the visceral pleura of your left lung. So you can see it goes straight till here and then it has a notch. Well, this is your right visceral pleura anterior margin. Now let's talk about the inferior margin. The visceral pleura inferior margin in both lungs is the same. It basically extends from this inferior margin at the mid clavicular line is present at the sixth rib. At the mid axillary line, the inferior margin touches the eighth rib. And finally, going back, the inferior margin touches the tenth rib at the level of the lateral border of erector spinae. So, 6th rib, 8th rib, 10th rib. These are two ribs higher than your parietal pleural reflection that I'll talk about later. Then it goes all the way behind till the 10th thoracic vertebra and 2 centimeter lateral to the 10th thoracic vertebra posteriorly, the inferior margin ends. So now let's let's talk about the what happens at the apex of the visceral pleura. The apex of the, the apices of the lungs are a little outside, as you remember. The superior aperture contains the apices of the lungs. That means they're leaving your thoracic cavity at the apex of the lung. The apex of the lung is a little outside. So what is that point? That point, 2.5 centimeter above the medial one third of the clavicle, that point is where the apices of the lungs go up to. So now you can actually trace what the lung looks like and just join these points and form lung. So this way you can actually trace what your lung is going to look like. 